Here we have user one logged in. And if we can see here from this Mac, we have a Core 2 Duo. Um, I'm not connected to an actual XServe. I have a demo box with me. Uh, we have three gigs of RAM in that device, but uh, the user basically can run whatever applications they want. I'm not sure if we have internet access set up on this device, but here we go. As you can see, internet access is pretty fluid. Normal network access is pretty fluid also. Um, this is one user running on the system right now. Now let's go ahead and connect in with another user session. So here I have the Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol Connection Client, which is the RDC client for the Mac. Now, again, you can use whatever RDP client you want. You could even use VNC or X11, but just keep this demonstration simple. I'm going to be using the Microsoft client. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect, and this time I'm going to connect with user 2. Now I've already saved the user preferences, so you can see here. In one user session, I, I have the dock at the bottom. That's one way of telling, plus I have Safari still running. In the other user session, I have um, basically the dock on the, on the side, and I also have noticed the user's home folder is different as user uh, 2. Just to drive home the fact that it's the same server, we'll basically bring up the serial numbers of the server. And we can see real briefly that they are the same serial number, ending in XYYJX, XYYJX. So as you can see here, we have multiple user sessions running concurrently. Login was nice and fast. Application access is nice and fluid and simple. I'm going to also demonstrate real briefly connecting from the iPhone. Can we switch over to the iPhone, please? So here we have the iPhone. Uh, in this case, actually, it's an iPod Touch. Uh, but iPhone, iPod Touch, same situation. We have running on here an RDP client called WinAdmin. And we'll go ahead and connect. Actually, let me just verify that uh, our network setting is set up. It seems to be forgetting it lately. Yeah, our Wi-Fi setting is not set up, so let me just set up real quick. All right, now we should be able to connect. There we go. So now, I'm going to turn this sideways so we get a better view. We have the Mac desktop, in this case, user 3's desktop. I'm going to go ahead and bring up his uh, Finder. And as you can see here, it's nice and fluid. To drive home the fact, we'll zoom in and we'll see that Macintosh hard drive over there, but we'll see that we are actually at user 3's home folder. Again, another user account accessed via the Wi-Fi connection through an iPod Touch, which could also be an iPhone. Uh, we can launch any application that we normally would be able to launch. So, for example, we'll, we'll launch Safari. And there goes Safari. So, again, normal user applications can run just the way they want to. So let's switch back to the uh, desktop for a moment. To also show you one of the advantages of Terminal Server, we're going to go ahead and install a new application. In this case, we're going to just do a simple one. So we're going to do Firefox. First thing you got to do is you got to make sure you log in as an actual user that has uh, the security privileges to do that. So an administrator account is required. Here I've already logged in as one of them. This one is a user, I'm sorry, admin2, which is a, a admin account. And as we can see here real quickly, we have Firefox on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the application folder. I'm just going to drag and drop the sucker in here. And now Firefox is installed, just like you would normally install any other Mac application. Going back here to user one, if I went to applications real briefly, I see Firefox there. And as a matter of fact, I can drag it to my dock and use Firefox. Just to drive home the point, I'm also going to launch Firefox from user two's application. No, I don't want to import anything. And no, I don't want it to be my default browser. But as you see here, we have Firefox running. I'm going to go to a website that I haven't been to before. So for example, in this case, CNN. And I will launch Firefox from user 2 session. This is to demonstrate that the user 
sessions are isolated from one another. Here we have one website going while the other one is going at the same time in another browser. As a matter of fact, if I went into Activity Monitor, which is one of the uh, nicer things, let's go in as an administrator account though. If I went into Activity Monitor, and I select this to show all processes, and I'll sort by username here, you'll see that I have an admin account running on the server. I also have a user1 account running on the server. I have a user2 account running on the server, running Firefox as a matter of fact, uh, and a user3 account running on the server, followed by an admin2 account. Now, here it gives, this gives us an overview of the entire process of the server and what's running. Now, keep in mind, I'm not running this on an actual X serve, and I'm running this on a MacBook Pro. So, let's go ahead and kill user 2's Firefox. As you can see here in the background, I'm going to go ahead and hide some of these windows. User 2 has Firefox still running. As an administrator, I can go in here as user 2, select his Firefox, and actually quit the process. But before doing that real quickly, you'll see the CPU is pretty rel is relatively idle for having three, I'm sorry, four user sessions running at the same time on a non X serve, by the way. And keep in mind, I stress non X serve because we have actually optimized our application to run uh, on the Mac Pro and on the X serves themselves. So we're gonna actually force quit Firefox. And you'll notice that user two's Firefox was no longer able to run. Of course, he could always start another copy of Firefox running again, which brings us to our actual admin tool. In AquaConnect, we ship a AquaConnect admin tool. Just to show you the location of the tool, under Applications, you have a server folder that is installed with every Mac OS X server. And in here, there's an AC admin tools. Of course, there's also an uninstaller just in case you want to uninstall AquaConnect. We're going to run our AC admin tool. And here's our AC admin tool. And I can see all the user sessions running concurrently. If I want to, I can click on, click on user 2 and actually terminate his session or her session. And you'll notice that the screen basically goes dark. And after a few moments, it'll actually say you're disconnected. But I'm just going to go ahead and force the issue. In the admin tool, we'll also be able to see what protocols uh, they're connected from and also what address they're connected from, along with the time that they're connected. In addition, bring up the users list here. We can see uh, CPU prioritization. We can set priorities for user accounts. So if the server were to get busy and CPU time were to get scarce, well, what would happen is we would start actually partitioning the CPU, um, basically balancing out the CPU's time. But since we're relatively idle here, and on this particular MacBook Pro, in order to stress the limit, we'd need probably about a few dozen users running at the same time. Uh, so we're not going to be able to simulate that here for you. But if the CPU were actually get scarce, the people with the higher priorities will actually get more t CPU time versus lower priorities. In addition, we can actually even audit a user session, and we can actually look at what applications are launching at what time. This is actually very, very useful for um, an administrator or for someone that needs to actually be able to watch what a user is doing. We can track um, what applications they ran, and in a near future version, we can even track what files they have access to. Um, of course, AquaConnect has its own administrative list. We can, we can control that through this admins tab. Finally, terminal. We have uh, options for terminal. Here's the VNC protocol, RDP protocol, X11 protocol. Um, we can control various aspects of them, such as bitmap caching to get better performance across a wider network connection. Uh, we also have the server tab. Now, the server tab is very helpful because it'll list your version number, and this is useful for tech support purposes. Uh, let me hide the doc here. We could also see the number of active user sessions, maximum sessions allowed, your license key, so you can control that. Finally, again, back to here, we can also choose to terminate session when disconnect. This basically will terminate the user session when he disconnects the system. Now, some people may want this, but before you do that, think, think for a moment here. Terminating a user session is actually uh, 
useful for uh, temporary users, but for permanent users that may be doing things, when you disconnect from a, a terminal from a client, that session continues to run on the server.